Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. Mothers aren't just women. Anybody who takes care of anybody, loves anybody, anyone. I mean, and it doesn't have to be human. I mean, I got a cat right there. That's, I'm her mommy. But I won't, you know, celebrate the day because, please, other people will say, yo, oh, you're her mommy. It's Mother's Day for you. Okay, I'll accept that, but I won't be like, I should get something from her too. I'm a dork if I do that or buy myself a gift. I'm a dork. I'll just admit that. But enough of that. But um, I just wanted to wish everyone a wonderful Mother's Day. And I'm dedicating this to my mom. She won't know it. Let me get it out of the way now because I'll start crying because I'm a dork like that. Um, my Both my grandmothers who have passed are in heaven. I want to dedicate this day to you as well. Mwah. You know why I love my grandmother on my mom's side. And my father's mother, who I've never really talked about and I've never shown you pictures of. Because I just didn't ask for permission from my dad and my uncle. Because so I respect that. Um, she taught me a lot about fashion and sewing and design. She used to make hats, beautiful hats. Um, you know, this is another side of me, another side of my family. My grandmother on my mother's side was not so much more genteel or anything. She was very, she was very quiet and very just, you know, prim and proper. And it's not a matter of it being prim and proper, but then my father's mother, deep south, down right. Oh, I'm a combination of both, and I love it. So thank you, beautiful woman. Thank you so much for that. And you, you, you can see it in when I've ever shown my parents on my vlogs. You'll see my mom's side and my dad's side. You'll see the difference of the two of them and why, you know, why it works out and why I'm like both more like dad according you're just like your father according to my mother but we'll let that part go anyway back to my mom when my brother was born it was already known that not so much something wrong but he was definitely different from what I from what I was like when I was born so she knew there was gonna be some situations and um, throughout his life she'd always been there so, damn it, let's dedicate it to you. I love how you are for him. We may not be getting along, but I love how you are for him. And that's what I thank you for. Anyway, moving on. I promised myself I wouldn't do this. No, I didn't, but anyway. That's what a mom is. Because I remember when I was little, whenever anything needed to be done for him, counseling, therapy, schoolwork and stuff, she was always there. And I was always wondering, why not me? And for the young, longest time when I was younger, I hated, I was so, I was like, why is she giving him all this time? She loves him more than me. And I was always angry about that, but I never knew until one day I happened upon some paperwork that was done. They were doing something and I happened upon the paperwork and I just said, they were at work so I could look through it and I read it. I mean, you're talking hours. I just sat there and read all the stuff that he had to go through. He was interviewed. He was, you know, he, his therapists were interviewed and they were talking about stuff, you know, um, how he, you know, he had a problem writing and how he was slightly dyslexic and everything and just all the situations. Now, this is the 70s and he was black. And I'll tell you, back in the 70s, you know, autism wasn't really 
disgust or anything. So my parents worked their ass off to get him help because they didn't know what to do. And they knew this and this wasn't just something he'll grow out of. They saw this as this is who he is. This is who he's going to be. So we need help with this. We need to discuss, you know, this is why he has to go to this specialty school. This is why we've had to spend this money. This is why we've had to do all this stuff. And, you know, they had to bring proof of everything. And as I said, in the 70s, people didn't know about it. And so, especially if you were a minority, sorry, you know, sorry to go there, but it's rough. And I remember she would always be the one to take him to the doctors. My dad was a teacher, so he was he was pinned down to his job. And that's, I'm not mad at anything. And he was not, like he was neglectful or anything. He was trying to basically make the money. You know, he was the steady worker because he had to be, because she had to take him to the doctors. And since I was, I had no problems, I was left, you know, I was in good hands. There was a daycare center, it, I'm sure it's still there, at Rutgers, and that's where we used to stay because she used to work at Rutgers. Well, she still does, but at the time she was working at Rutgers, so it was like she can get to us very easily because, you know, she was right on campus and we were right on campus. Anyway, she used to take him everywhere. Doctors, therapists, she would be with him not even 24-7, but anything involving his care. She was there because that's what he needed. She, He was the one he turned to. That was his mom. That's why I posted the picture of the two of them on my Facebook page as opposed to all of us. It's like, that's what he knew. And that's what made him the man he is today. He's a sweet guy and he's... He will, everybody thinks, she thinks he'll do anything for me. No. What she will never know is that he will do everything, everything for her. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm, I'm his sister. I'm influencing him, but that's who he truly loves. So, Mom, this is for you. And Grandma and Grandma, Aunt Iris, oh. <laughs> She, oh, I told you about her haunting me. You know she did. I remember I was at a church for a family reunion in Connecticut, and I believe it was her church, and I was standing there talking to family and relatives. We were in, like, the basement area where the cafeteria is, and I kept feeling a tap on my shoulder, and I just thought it was other family members, so I kind of looked over, and, and I always saw people walk by, so I just ignored it. You know, just people saying hi, so I waved and everything. And the funny thing is, I, you know, I kept talking and talking, and I kept feeling the tap. And it was getting a little bit harder, like that, back here. And I kept looking, and there was nobody there. And I just kept saying, oh, I'm, this person wants to talk to me, so I'll just wait. The next time it happens, I'll turn around. And that's what I did. So the next time I'm in a group, there's like two other people, I feel the tap again. I turn around, there's nobody there. I mean, and there's nobody nearby, so it's not even like, oh, I just saw somebody try to, you know, you know, when somebody tries to do that thing where they weave around you, nobody was there. And I thought about it, and I took a thought, and I was like, Oh my God, we're in her church. And I just immediately started thinking of my Aunt Iris because what she would always, always do to me whenever she saw me, always tap me, even from behind, especially from behind, and tap me. I turn around, why you not come see me? Why you not come see me? That's what she would always say to me. And as soon as I realized, I started smiling. <laughs> never felt the taps again. 
but she knew that I knew, and I knew who it was. So that was my Mother's Day story, and, you know, to all the beautiful women out there, to all the beautiful people out there who are, who are mothers, have a wonderful, beautiful day, and again, thank you, Mom. You have no idea.